Hi, this is Stan. Welcome back to the Crow's Nest Railroad. Well, we're here in the shop, and I'm hoping you'll want to take a look at this new piece of kit that I just got in from the UK. So, join me. <laughs> Well, let's take a closer look, but before we do, I just want to explain what's going on. I've got an engineering car that I use behind my electric locomotive, Little Rodney, and we used it on the steam locomotive to get that tested. But now that the steam locomotive is ready to rock and roll here, I want a engineering car that's a little more friendly for being able to get coal in and out and being able to manipulate the steam locomotive from behind. And so I want another engineering car that has a low profile on the front end. My current engineering car is relatively high in the front, which is fine for working the electric locomotive. Plus in the back of my mind, I can envision maybe someday running two locomotives here in the Crow's Nest Railroad. So I'd like an engineering car that I could use for Rodney and one for the steam locomotive if we have an occasion to run two locomotives. I bought this kit from Peter at Abbott's Model Engineering in Telford, England, and it arrived very quickly, and I'm really happy with it so far. So let's check into some of the details and see what's going on. So we've got two of the trucks, or bogies, unbraked and braked, and here's the basic frame, and then the removable footrests that go along the sides and of course the little giblets that put everything together. This is a very sturdy hefty kit. It's not so heavy that I can't lift it but it is substantial. Let's take a check here. about 6.2 mil. That's about a quarter of an inch on the steel here. It's all powder coated, beautifully done. And these removable running boards on the side are about a little over three mil. They're about an eighth of an inch. So this is a very substantial kit. Uh, there's no flex in it and it looks really beautiful. And I really like this design of the European trucks. The truck itself rides on these two bearings that are away from the center pin. And they rotate like this. I'll put a little grease underneath. And it makes for a very stable ride. And I think that's really important for a small gauge like 5 inch gauge to not be rocking back and forth like I do on my larger seven and a half inch equipment where you're basically mounting and transferring the weight down to the center of the truck instead of the two sides. Another nice feature is that these running boards are super sturdy but they're removable. They simply button in and set down and I can remove them when I'm not using this as an engineering car. So here's a little closer look. Looks to be bearings on the side. Here's your suspension springs. And like I said, these big nylon or Teflon bearings here. I'm not sure which. And here's the braked bogey here same mechanism except we've got a stiff plate looks to be about an eighth of an inch or so running along the bottom of the truck and it connects the two pivoting brake levers and here you can see the brake shoes as they will compress and squeeze on the wheel and I also got this lever and cable that I can mount on the side of the tender and it will wrap around and activate that front brake. This is going to be a multi-part series. I've already started getting some measurements going. I've got a little inspiration drawing here 
it's going to be a tender like this that I can sit on and operate actually either Rodney or the steam engine but I'm gonna kinda go with this burgundy theme that I've already got going on the locomotives so this is my inspiration here but today I would just like to see if we can get it roughly assembled maybe put some sort of a plank on the top so that I can take it out on the track and just test it out and see how things are going before we start on the build and then I will do another episode or two of the actual build procedure but today I'd love to because I'm impatient just get it out on the rails and see how it's going to work first let's get these mounting pins attached to the trucks we're going to need a 13 millimeter wrench All right, now let's do the back one. All right, let's slip both of these onto the frame. That was easy enough. And I'm also going to grease those pads. And here you can see how easy these footrests go on. Now let's put these little connector clevises on. I'm going to use the bottom hole. You can see this little buffer plate is pre-drilled for the clevis and for buffers if you want to attach those. Well, that was easy. Let me put the one on the front. There we go. Well, I think we're ready to take this out, put it on the rails, and give it a test. All right, there it is on the rails. No brakes, no top, and no foot rests. But let me give it a push and see how it goes. Alright, promising so far. Well, let's give it the toboggan test down the grade. Well, that went well. Let me add the footboards and I'll throw a little box on there for a seat and I'll sit on it this time. I think that's a win. Well, let's pull it back to the car barn. I've got one more test.
<laughs> well, sorry about that background noise. I think my neighbor must be testing out her new jetpack that she got for Christmas. Anyway, I want to see if Rodney and three cars will fit here in the car barn with the doors closed. Wow, it just fits. Well, everything worked out perfectly today. I'm really excited about this kit. I'll put a link down below so that you can check out the AME website. And I just can't wait to get started on this tender build. I'm going to say hasta la vista, hoping you'll be back. See you right here next time on the Crow's Nest Railroad. <laughs>